Hello, 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 hello. I'm Simulator Dirk and welcome to another episode of Simulator Dirk Train Simulator. We are back with some Dutch trains in Germany and our train is just a little bit too long for the platform. Rather sweet looking train, however, this is. We are in Germany, very busy section of line. Uh, we've already seen a couple of trains going past. I think I can hear another one in the distance. There's an ICE going through. So we'll go back and we'll have a look at our train. In the previous episode, I did try to have a look at a Dutch route but it wasn't unfortunately very successful but we're in Cologne we're heading out to the airport long train this one so we should try and open the doors while we're here there we go So here we are in, in Germany. I thought that I would show off this particular train on this route. Our doors are closing. Uh, actually, I will open them again. I don't want to see what happens with the, um, with the short platform. Okay, so it's recognised that it's a short platform. So that is cool. There's our driver in our extra train. We'll just wait for our doors to close, then we'll get in the cab and we will depart for Cologne Airport. A little bit of horn, let's get in the cab, reverse it forward. And we'll have a look in our cab. We're not running, again, we're not running a scenario. Um, just trying to uh, showcase the train uh, more than anything. Because unfortunately the route that I had with the scenario, the only scenario that I've downloaded, unfortunately didn't work very well. Uh, this is a German route. Uh, scenery very spectacular. I think it might have even been... Oops. Got to remember I've got a single power brake controller. Um, I actually did do an episode very, very early. Might have been episode four where I did a S-Bahn episode, I think might have been on this line. And that seems like such a long time ago now uh, when that episode actually featured. This is episode 54 off the top of my head. So it would have been about 50 episodes ago. So we'll just go through. Uh, the platform and then we'll give you a look outside. Very short time with this train. I uh, thought that the route was going to be a little bit longer than it actually was. Now, I'm pretty sure I've been through Cologne but maybe that's as far as it's got there. But uh, nice view over this, nice view of this bridge. Very detailed German routes tend to be. Uh, scenery is usually pretty good. There's a um, a regional train um, on the bridge. Lots of railway action in Germany, and uh, 
Uh, suburban services like this S-Bahn service that's coming up. I think from when we're on, um, on Route 12. So I don't think we'll be able to go much faster for the moment. So let's have a look outside at our train. Very detailed scenery. Nice looking, nice looking train. I'll leave a link in the show notes at the bottom of this video on YouTube and also at simuladirtgaming.com. So if you would like to uh, download this train, it is a paid, paid train as most of them tend to be. Um, if you would like to um, download it, you'll be, uh, you'll be able to. that I am finding an increasing number of trains and routes and installing them from outside the train simulator universe. Uh, maybe I need to be a little bit lower. As you can see, very, uh, very detailed, detailed scenery there. Going up here, I'll need to apply a little bit more power. If I run, oh, okay, what's happened here? Um, this isn't good. I'm player train derailed. Now, how did that happen? I know that I'm running a, uh, and unfortunately I wasn't in the cab, so I won't be able to go back and look, but that was rather unfortunate. wanted to um, have a little bit more of a look of that train um, so what we'll try and do we'll run actually we'll go from the business park because there is a um, series of stations that I can use. I'll run from the business park so we can see what that looks like. Um, we'll run it in basically in the... actually we'll go from... I can also run on the S13. So we'll run from Cologne, no, we'll, we'll run from the airport, and we'll run to Trollsdorf, we'll use the same train, and we'll see how we go there. Let's have a look at something else that's happening across Channel Oak as I wait for uh, this particular train to reload. There's certainly a lot going on around Channel Irk, that is for sure. Let's have a look. What's going on in the trucking world? Let's have a look and be back in a moment. There are those who would like to see you fail in your journey. That's not going to happen on my watch. Let's go. Can we stop for ice cream, Bart? Can we stop for ice cream? Oh, it's the Max! Ho 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 ho! The Portland Light Rail System, the Max, and that's what it actually looks like. How sweet! Uh, end of May, June, July, and now we're into August, so... That was the longest night of my life.
over now. Thank you, Sky. going on in and around Simulator Dirk in terms of truck. Let's get back to trains however and we'll have a look at our train now. We are on the platform at this end at least. Let's open our doors. We are at uh, Klein Airport and we'll be taking off shortly for Trollsdorf. Just wait for our doors to close. Go for a bit of a walk down the platform in our Dutch train in Germany. Again, I didn't try and match the length of the train to the platform. Let's put our reverser into forward. Apply some power, a little bit of horn. And let's go, Batman. So 120 straight off where we are into this section. Let's apply some power. Again, not running a scenario, just trying to um, show off the train. There's our train, our Dutch train in Germany. Certainly got very, very quick acceleration. Our train there was certainly snaking around as it was uh, changing tracks. Um, oh, we're in 160 zone now. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Okay, let's continue. Let's get back to the to the action. One of the things that can happen if you are running say a Dutch train in Germany in Train Simulator is that sometimes things don't often work as they should if the train was on its home network. So I'm more concerned about showing off the train rather than actual driving at this point. There's another train um, approaching a freight train there.
So it's got rather easily up to the 160 track speed. On a relatively flat section. That's a view you wouldn't be able to have in real life, wow. train. Still 160 zone, got about three kilometres to go uh, before our destination so we should think about slowing up soon or at least taking the power off. as we arrive at this platform we should just take the power off so we'll just take the power off there so it's very hard unless you're using dedicated hardware to find the actual speed spot on a um, single brake power controller Okay, platform coming up two kilometres away. It's still 160 zones, so let's just break now. Let the train come back nicely. Going to need a long time to stop from that speed. But we are slowing down nicely. Let's just get back into the cab. Now, I don't know the length of this platform compared to this train. Slowing down nicely, so we'll just roll in now. Uh, we do have a uh, visual on the platform. So if I was a little bit way away, maybe I did apply too much brake there, but that's a... Uh, lack of road knowledge thing. Another freight train off there in the distance. I don't know how much platform I have to play with. This is, um, this is part of the thing. Now there are some German platforms that are very, very long, but this is a um, this is a suburban system. Got a little bit more platform to play with. Um, So we'll have a quick look at our train, we'll open the doors, let our passengers out, have a quick look down the platform, see the length of the train that we had to deal with. It's certainly a long, certainly a long train. And we did fit. Uh, we did fit on the platform, so that is good. Wooden tug. So, very good.
back shortly. Let's see what else is happening around Simulator Dirt because I'll load the next train. Truck. Turn ready on. to rock. You ready to rock, Miss Sky? We're at the container terminal again. We're in a Volvo uh, this time. Let's go. Rather enthusiastic Skynet today. <laughs> Let's do that sky now. Let's find a new route, as you call it.
And welcome back. Welcome back to Simulator Deck. We have gone somewhere totally different this time with our new type of Dutch train that we have out here. We have a locomotive hold. We have a locomotive hold train on this occasion. We'll turn our lights off. We'll go have a quick look at our train. So the interesting thing about it, that to me looks like a totally functional driver's cab, but it's being locomotive old. So uh, let's go back. Yeah, so it's a push-pull uh, situation. We'll go and have a look on the platform. Well, that's a very narrow... Uh, very narrow platform. So let's get in our train. A little bit of horn. A reverser forward. A little bit of brake. A little bit of power now. Now you might actually remember this, I think, from around about episode 7, where we went in the Alps. Needed a little bit of time to take off there. 30 kilometres an hour, so... Very slow here for the moment. So we'll just coast. Going down in this tunnel, now, I don't know how realistic this would be in relation to this train actually fitting in this tunnel. Um, I like how the emergency brake is SOS. Oh, this isn't... This doesn't feel good. Uh, we might have to bring the train to a stop. Because I was in emergency brake. Alright, so there's our... There's our train. Looking very, very different to the train that would normally be for here. Alright, let's get back into the cab. Turn the emergency brake off, reverse it in forward. A little bit of power. Now, one thing I have noticed... Um, thing I have noticed with these Dutch trains, that the acceleration... I don't know how realistic it is, but the acceleration... I didn't put much power into that at all. Ah, uh, put the emergency brake back on. So I didn't put much power into that at all, and it's totally taken off. So we'll just have to um, wait again, back, be stationary again, brake off. Tiny bit of power. Now there's not very many steps before you get to emergency. Obviously this train is not very well suited to uh, where I'm trying to use it. That's m minimum. So I've just fired a smidgen of power. So we'll brake there. And this train is just out of control. I 
I don't want to have to put another disclaimer up. Apart from the one that is now at the start of each episode. Actually, that is not a... That is actually not, if I take that away. It's actually not a bad screen cap for the episode. But... The acceleration on this train... And it doesn't even look like it's going that steeply. That um, down like a steep hill. So I'm applying a lot of brake here. This slowing down. Apart from anything else, the um, the gauge looks totally wrong. But we'll continue for a little bit. How this train hasn't ended up on its side by now, I seriously do not know. I've had trains derail with a lot of this. Emergency brake on again. Just a smidge of power, not even registering as applying power. That's how steep it is. Now I know we are now going steeply downhill. Alright, now this is a good test. I haven't even applied power. This is just the train. That was just the train taking off by itself. So what we'll do, we'll put it into emergency brake. One's probably the loco brake and one's probably the service brake. So we'll put the train into emergency. We'll let it come to a stand. Trains come to. Okay, we'll put the reverse. I'll take the emergency brake off. Reverse the end of forward. Now, I haven't even touched. I haven't even touched the. Um, haven't even touched the power handle. This is just rolling. Do not drive a r regular train like this, but I'm just going to um, let it go and see what happens. Because I don't think the physics are right at all. How the hell is this staying on the tracks? Seriously? Doing over double track speed just by rolling. Oh! Oh, there we go. Owl, do not drive like this at home. Why a train derailed? No kidding. What I should actually do now is go back to the Arosa line, pick the train that actually goes with it, uh, select route. If I can find it. Now hang on.
All right, this will be an interesting test. I'm going to run the same loco or the same consist on the high speed line that we featured on episode 50 because I want to give this a I want to give this a decent run. And we'll see how we go. Simulator day. We'll be right back very very soon. We've had a look at some buses. We've had a look at some trucks. We've had a look at Train Sim World. Let's go for a bit of a fast journey through time. Welcome back to Simulator Dirk Train Simulator. Let's give this train a bit of a chance to stretch its legs now on a high speed route. The train doors are open. And didn't stay open for very long, so we'll open them again. Now we're actually running this train in France 
on the high speed route that we put a lot of trains to their paces in episode number 50. Let's get in cab. Brakes off, reverse forward, and a little bit of power. Get to see more of it, more of the train in its. I won't say it's natural habitat because it should be in the Netherlands, but a little bit more realistic than the last environment that I put it in. A little bit more power. 30 kilometres an hour to uh, kick things off here. Again, acceleration very, very quick there. So we have uh, TGVs either side. Our current champions in terms of simulated X test speeds, our test runs, our speed runs, our high speed runs. The latest episode, um, or the latest episode where I did do a speed challenge, was episode 50. Uh, on this set of tracks, I would have liked to have seen the um, the Chinese high-speed train get a bit more of a better run. But having said that, the train systems were doing what they were designed to do, so. So we're just running. Don't think we'll run. Don't think we'll run the whole route because that's you know a good 50 minutes away, and we've already been going for about 45 minutes. But we will give it a decent amount of time. Actually, what we might do, we might run it the same way that we ran the uh, the speed episode. So we'll wait until we get to the 110 uh, to the 110 um, area. And then we'll open the train up and see what happens from there. So we can go up to uh, 60 kilometres an hour short. We just got to wait for the whole train uh, to pass into that area. It was very, very unrealistic and probably unfair of me to put this train in the scenario on the route that I chose to run it on before. that locomotive at each end. Okay, so we can go that little bit harder, but not much. Again, I don't know how Dutch locomotives work, so... Uh, we'll give you a bit of a cab view, though. Give it a bit more speed. See the power starting to increase on the uh, gauges on the left hand side. Doesn't take very long at all uh, to reach the 60 km an hour track limit. So a good representation of the screen there of the power that I I just applied. So we'll be in 110 kilometre an hour zone shortly, according to the uh, on screen display in the cab in front of us. Having said that, of course, we must keep in mind that the train is in France, um, so it might not work as designed, even though, you know, across Europe connectivity and interoperability, etc. So we'll. 140 coming up, we'll just wait until we hit the uh, 140 kilometre an hour zone. The um, screen in front of us seems to be indicating to me that um, we're still on a 60 kilometre an hour speed zone. I don't know how much these Dutch developers have actually gone into uh, train operations. Um, as I mentioned on this episode and the previous episode, I haven't, um, I haven't read any of the manuals or anything like that that have come with it. So 
110 zone now, just about to come into 140 zone, into the 140 zone now, so let's just open up the throttle and see what happens. Massive increase in power now, shown on the screen in, to the left, and now I can... There we go, we'll do that. So we can just keep a track of our uh, train speed. It's the actual speed on the screen seems to be fairly correct on the uh, left hand side. I'll just zoom in so you can have a little bit of a look at what I'm trying to talk about. The speed seems to be uh, pretty close to what it is on the bottom of the screen and it, the train actually may be keeping us to the 60 km an hour limit even though we're in a 140 zone the system might not have picked up that we're actually in a uh, different speed zone now I don't know um, how much of this is clickable but uh, certainly a very detailed, uh, very detailed cab. We are applying max power, but because our system says that we're restricted to 60 kilometres an hour, it might actually be keeping us um, to 60 kilometres an hour. So that to me looks like a train radio, door controls. Uh, So I've actually tried, oh here we go, now it's recognised that I'm in 160 zone. So let's have a look outside shall we? Now again, if I read the manuals, I could be driving this a little bit better than I am, but this is mainly to uh, show you the train and get it up to um, get it up to speed. Sometimes it's hard to know unless you actually read uh, this, read about the system to see how fast the train can go, what sort of um, signalling system it uses. The the amount of detail in it also helps that I don't speak Dutch or read Dutch for that matter. So we're at 160 which seems to be um, pretty close to the maximum speed this train can do, TGV coming in the opposite direction. kilometres now into 160 zone now 230 zone coming up now it'll be interesting to see if when we're fully into this 230 zone if that speed on the screen actually changes I don't think it will because that's possibly the uh, maximum speed there I've just applied I've just applied max power and it's not doing a thing so maybe that's as fast as she goes we are going uphill uh, this is a high speed French line gee haven't we moved around in the last couple of episodes we've been we're driving Dutch trains in the Netherlands so home territory and then we've moved to Germany, we've moved to Switzerland and now we're in France. We've certainly moved around.
even though it's an uphill section, the train isn't losing speed. It's a pretty, pretty steep climb at this point. So we're just going to get into the uh, open air section. What I will try and do, I will try and download a uh, different scenario and a different route. Um, a different scenario and a different route and feature. And so we'll try and have a, um, a Dutch train in the Netherlands once again in its natural environment um, because it could have just been something that I didn't install or it could have been the... Um, the route itself will pick a different route I tried to pick a route that I was a little bit familiar with but we'll try and we'll pick a different uh, different route and see um, when you download something a, a route free off the internet sometimes you think that you've downloaded everything but in actual fact you might not have so um, some of that may not be down to the uh, person or persons or group that's, um, that's done the route. You know, some of those issues could be at my end. It's hard to tell. But I hope that this has given you, these last couple of episodes, a taste of what you can get around and also with the uh, Indian episode. I'll go back to India in the next episode. Uh, to show you some of the things that you can download off the internet that they might have a small cost or no cost at all but they aren't in the uh, train simulator store so you do have to um, go searching for them on the internet we'll leave a link in the show notes for where to download uh, these particular trains and uh, there's some other trains that you, you may be able to uh, purchase there as well. Anywho, I've been Simulated Eric. You have been wonderful. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, back to India in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out more things across Simulated Eric. Don't forget to stay safe and stay behind the yellow line. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.